If there's one thing the creators of Avatar, The Last Airbender, and The Legend of Korra have done so well is giving us some of the best female characters ever shown on television. Me! These formidable women's strength, <laughs> wisdom, and leadership skills have defined the very essence of power within the series. So in honor of all the strong women out there, here's our ranking of the most powerful female benders in the Avatar universe. No, no, she's not blaming you. No, I'm blaming her. Hey. Beginning this list at number 11 is Jinora. Remember, Jinora is in charge. I answer to no man or girl, even if she does have tattoos. Nilo. Though young, Jinora quickly proves herself to be wise beyond her years. What's that fuzzy creature? That is a fire ferret an arboreal mammal common to the bamboo forests of the Central Earth Kingdom. Her power lies primarily in her strong spiritual connection. It's okay, you can show yourselves. Wow! How did you do that? Janora! Bunnies! Which plays a crucial role in various plot points throughout the series. Jinora's astral projection abilities allow her to navigate the spirit world and communicate with spirits. Isn't it beautiful? While Jinora does not engage in physical combat like the Bending Masters, she contributes to battles in unique ways. Stay away from my dad's ex-girlfriend! <sighs> for instance, she assisted Korra during the battle for Zhao Fu. and led her fellow airbenders in creating a massive tornado to prevent Zahir's escape. At number 10 is Kaya. Zahir. Kaya, like her mother, is a waterbender who is highly proficient in a number of advanced waterbending techniques. Kaya's specialty lies in her mastery of healing. One of her most impressive feat was keeping Jinora's body alive for a week while her spirit was outside of her body. She was also able to hold her own in battle. Although she couldn't defeat powerful opponents like Zahir and Minghua, but at least she was alive to tell the tales, which is just as impressive. Coming in at number 9 is Minghua. Minghua is a unique waterbender who is able to waterbend without the use of her arms. She has water tendrils that she controls with her mind, almost like the waterbending version of combustion bending. In terms of power, Minghua is exceptionally skilled and agile in combat due to her unique bending abilities. I never thought I'd be so happy to see your ugly mugs again. Great to see you too, Minghua. Her lack of arms does not hinder her effectiveness. Instead, it makes her a more unpredictable and formidable opponent. Accomplished benders like Bolin. Go get the Avatar. I have these two under control. The twins. And Kaya. <laughs> all struggled against her because there was nothing to prepare them for the type of threat she posed. <laughs> Minghua is shown to be highly creative with her bending, using her water tendrils for offense, defense, and mobility. She can create complex shapes and structures with water. We could have just taken the elevator. Show off. Giving her a versatile range of techniques in battle. At number 8 is Lin Beifong. Lin, you are looking radiant as usual. Cut the garbage, Tenzin. Lin is renowned for her exceptional proficiency in metal bending. 
which she uses to maintain law and order in Republic City. As a member of the esteemed Beifong lineage, Lin boasts exceptional earth-bending prowess, showcasing advanced skills that set her apart. She adeptly maneuvers between the traditional Hungar earth-bending style and her mother's self-crafted Chugar praying mantis style, employing both for offense and defense. Lin possesses an exceptional seismic sense, utilizing it to track down criminals or her team members. Chief, the estate's been secured. No one has left the workshop since we arrived. Perhaps we just couldn't see him leaving. There's a tunnel beneath the workshop, running deep into the mountainside. In addition to her bending abilities, Lin is a skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant, seamlessly blending earth-bending and metal-bending techniques with martial arts prowess. <laughs> Number 7 is Peely, aka Sparky Sparky Boom Woman. Peely possesses the rare ability to create explosive blasts with her mind through combustion bending. And stay out of her line of sight! Go! Making her one of the most powerful and dangerous adversaries faced by Team Avatar. Her accuracy and control over these explosive blasts make her a lethal opponent in combat. Although primarily known for her mastery of combustion bending, Peely showcased proficiency as a combatant and a firebender. She effortlessly countered a fire blast from a dragon using conventional firebending techniques and demonstrated her ability to generate flames during her confrontation with Mako and Bolin while attempting to kidnap Korra in Zaofu. Coming in at number 6 is Suyin Beifong. Suyin is among the most powerful metal benders in the Avatar universe. She has mastered the art to such an extent that she can perform intricate metal bending techniques with ease, including using it defensively and offensively in combat situations. My sculpture! Actually, it looks kind of better now. Even bending out liquid metal from inside a person's body. Suyin has the better track record against the Red Lotus, both in foiling Zaheer's kidnapping attempt and being the one who killed P. Lee, sneak attack or not. Please! To be very honest, encasing P. Lee's head with her armor isn't just only an example of precise bending, it's also an example of quick thinking and being able to spot and exploit a weakness in your opponent, which is at the core of what makes someone a great fighter. <laughs> nice job, little bro! It's safe to say that Suyin approaches metal bending with more artistry. She's more like a waterbender, smooth and graceful. It's probably why her Skrillex kid is a metal bending artist. Wow, that's a really nice banana? <sighs> it's not a banana! It represents the dawning of a new age. Obviously. Oh yeah, no, I could I could totally see that. Number five is Kavira. All hail the Great Uniter! Kavira is a first-class earthbender who is capable of launching powerful and precise earth attacks. <laughs> but the fact that she was decisive and strong brought people to follow and help her achieve her goals. <laughs> Kuvira was more powerful because of her leadership skills, similar to Amon. She wanted stability, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It was only her methods that were problematic. Now there's a voice in my head telling me to drop you on the tracks. Should I listen? No! No! Head voices are liars! She wanted the world to be predictable and safe for her, because her childhood had been unstable. You're... Kuvira... 
And you're the bandits who have been causing chaos, where I am trying to establish order. Kavira is the embodiment of a metal bender, in my opinion. She just didn't understand balance. At number four, we have the formidable Azula. What are you doing here? You mean it's not obvious yet? I am about to celebrate becoming an only child! Azula is in a league of her own when it comes to bending. And to call her an expert bender seems insufficient considering her vast and deadly skill set. of fire, I see. That's good. You should be. She is the only known character who is able to create blue fire. And the first female character in the series to be seen generating lightning like it's nothing. She embarrassed her brother in a firebending combat, matching him blow for blow. Not to mention, she somehow held her own against four benders at once before disappearing. I don't know why Toph used dirt. Azula possesses remarkable intelligence and strategic acumen. You were born with nothing, so you've had to struggle and connive and claw your way to power. But true power, the divine right to rule, is something you're born with. You've beaten me at my own game. Don't flatter yourself. You were never even a player. Her adeptness at manipulation allows her to outmaneuver her adversaries cunningly. Fueled by an insatiable thirst for power and control, Azula's fervent ambition and unyielding determination makes her a formidable adversary. I think you should take their precious hope and the rest of their land and burn it all to the ground. Also, Azula sure knows how to dish out a burn. Well then, maybe you should worry less about the Tides who've already made up their mind about killing you and worry more about me. He's still mulling it over. I'll pull us in. Number three is the one and only Toph Beifong. Watch it, Toph! I am not Toph! I am Melon Lord! <laughs> if you ask fans of Avatar, the last airbender who their favorite character is, a lot of them would say Toph Beifong, and for a good reason. Your daughter's amazing! She kind of took the world of Avatar by storm with her appearance in all its contradictory glory. <laughs> At first glance, this little girl may not seem like anything special, but don't let her innocent appearance fool you. Uh, 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 hungry for a mud pie? Uh, uh, I'll give you a mud pie! Toph is actually an incredibly powerful earthbender with a hint of mischief. She's a master at bending earth, fighting and sensing vibrations in the ground all while being blind. Oh. That really hurt my tailbone. That's right, the greatest earthbender in the world is a small, blind girl, and she's amazing. She proved to be a great, loyal friend and master to Aang. The key to earthbending is your stance. You've got to be steady and strong. I'm ready. <laughs> Rock me, tailbender. She's also quite entertaining because she's stubborn, sarcastic, independent, confident, and a bit short-tempered. There it is! That's what it will sound like when one of you spots it. She's not the type to take nonsense from anyone, and she'll tell you exactly what she thinks of you without sugarcoating. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, you are sorry. If you're not tough enough to stop the rock, then you could at least give it the pleasure of smushing you instead of jumping out of the way like a jelly-boned whip. Toph Beifong is truly an undisputed champion. I am the greatest earthbender in the world. Don't you two dunderheads ever forget it. Number two is Hama. That was 
is incredible. It's a shame about the lilies, though. Hama is exceptionally powerful in her own right, particularly in the art of water bending. She could extract water from unconventional sources like grass, flowers, trees, and even the air. But what sets her apart is her mastery of a unique and dark form of water bending known as blood bending. You should have learned the technique before you turned against me. It's impossible to fight your way out of my grip. I control every muscle, every vein in your body. Her proficiency in blood bending is formidable, as she can overpower even skilled benders with ease. Don't hurt your friends, Katara. And don't let them hurt each other. While Hama's power is unquestionable, her methods are morally dubious. <laughs> Despite her strength, she ultimately serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked power and the consequences of allowing darkness to consume one's soul. They threw me in prison to rot, along with my brothers and sisters. They deserve the same. Number one is none other than the talented Katara. Hey, you guys are waterbenders. You too? That means we're kin! Even from the first episode, we see Katara is an incredibly talented waterbender, bursting with raw power. <laughs> Katara's strength lies not only in her raw bending abilities, but also in her adaptability and resourcefulness. Everyone single file! She can manipulate water in its various forms, including ice and mist. And is adept at both offensive and defensive maneuvers. Throughout the series, Katara undergoes significant growth as a bender, mastering advanced techniques such as healing you have healing abilities. The great benders of the water tribe sometimes have this ability. And blood bending. I don't know if I want that kind of power. Her journey from a young girl seeking revenge to a wise and compassionate master is one of the most compelling arcs in the series. Still can't get over how Katara managed to beat a firebending prodigy during Sozin's Comet. No full moon, no blood bending, just raw water bending. She was at a disadvantage, but still came out on top. Okay, you've gone from weird to freakish, Katara. You mean I did that? Yep. Congratulations. Now tell us, who's your favorite female bender? And who do you think we might have left out? What other ranking videos do you want us to do? Comment below and subscribe for more bending contents. Until next time, stay geeky. Some help? Talk! Help me plug up this drain!